Hello, my name is Marcos Eduardo Valle from the University of Campinas, Brazil, and I will present you a linear dilation erosion perceptron trained using a convex concave procedure as part of the 12th International Conference on Soft Computing and Pattern Recognition. This work has been done in collaboration with Angélica Lourenço Oliveira and has been partly supported by the Brazilian funding agency FAPESP, SINPEQ and CAPES. Let I begin by presenting the basic concepts of mathematical morphology. Mathematical morphology is a non-linear theory widely used for image processing and analysis. The elementary operators from mathematical morphology are dilations and erosions. A dilation is an operator that commutes with the supreme operator, while an erosion is an operator that commutes with infimum operator. But in this talk, we'll focus on two particular examples of dilation and erosion. Given A, a dilation delta A from Rn to R is an operator given by the maximum of x plus a, where the plus is computed in a component-wise manner. In a similar fashion, an erosion epsilon b x is given by the minimum of x plus b. Let us now review the morphological perceptrons introduced by Ritter and Susner in 1996. The morphological perceptrons are obtained from Rosenblatt's perceptron by replacing the affine transformation AX equals to the dot product between table and X plus B by a morphological operator. For example, the dilation erosion perceptron is given by Y equals to the sign of the dilation of X. Equivalent the dilation percept is given by the sign of the maximum of x plus a. In a similar fashion, an erosion-based perceptron is given by y equals to the sign of the erosion of x, or equivalent the sign of the minimum of x plus b. In 2011, Araújo proposed dilation erosion perceptron. A dilation erosion perceptron, DAP, is a lib network obtained by combining both morphological perceptrons. Formally, given beta between 0 and 1, a depth classifier is defined by y equals to the sign of tau x, where tau is the decision function of the depth classifier and is given by tau x equals to beta dilation of x plus 1 minus beta erosion of x. In other words, the decision function tau is a convex combination of a dilation and an erosion. Because of the maximum and the minimum operators, a depth classifier implicitly requires a partial ordering on both the input space and the set of classes. Moreover, the decision function tau preserves the ordering relationship. In other words, the user must take care of because the ordering in the input space is somewhat related to the order of the classes. Reduced dilation erosion perceptron, R depth, circumvent the drawbacks of the depth model using concepts from vector value and mathematical morphology. Let V be the input space and C the set of class labels. Given a one-to-one -one mapping sigma from the set of class to minus 1 plus 1 and a surjective mapping rho1 from the input space to Rn1 and rho2 from the input space to Rn2, the RDEP classifier is defined by y equals to the inverse of sigma applied on the sign of the decision function of the RDEP. The decision function of the R depth, denoted by tau R x, is given by a convex combination of a dilation and an erosion, but the dilation is computed on a transformed version of x, and in a similar fashion, the erosion is computed in a transformed version of x. 
choose inappropriate mappings, how well and how true is the main challenge for a successful RDAP classifier. So, in this talk, we propose to consider row 1 and row 2 as linear mappings, using the Linear Dilation Erosion Perceptron, or LDAP. When V is a vector space, Rm, and if row 1 and row 2 are linear mappings, there is a matrix R1 and R2, so that Rho x is the product of R1 x and Rho 2 is the product of R2 x. Concluding, a linear dilation erosion perceptron classifier is given by y equals to the inverse of sigma applied on the sign of the tau l rx, where tau l is the decision function of the l depth classifier and is given by a convex combination of the dilation and an erosion, but the dilation is computed on the product of R1x and the erosion is computed on the product R2x. There is an alternative formulation of the decision function of the LDAP classifier. The details can be found in the paper. The decision function of the LDAP classifier can be equivalent written as tau Lx equals to the maximum of double x plus c minus the maximum of mx plus d. Looking at this equation, we conclude that the decision function tau l is a piecewise linear function. As a consequence, an l that can theoretically solve any binary classification tasks. Moreover, the l that is closely related to the max out network by Goodfellow et al. As a traditional neural network, the max out network is usually trained by minimizing the square the error or the cross entropy. In this talk, we propose a new training for the LDAP classifier. Inspired by the linear support vector classifier and the recent work by Charles Opoulos and Maragos, we train the LDAP classifier using a concave convex procedure. So, consider a training set D of pair xi and di for i from 1 to k, and define the sets of positive and negative samples by this due equation, that is, c plus is x such that sigma of the class di equals to plus 1, while c minus are the samples whose labels are associated to minus 1. The training samples are respected to satisfy these two inequalities, which means the decision function applied on a negative sample should be negative, while the decision function applied on a positive sample must be positive. By rescaling these two inequalities, we obtain these other two inequalities and also by allowing an error denoted by xi, we obtain these two inequalities which will be used as constraint in the convex concave procedure. Hunter's double C, N and D of an L depth classifier can be obtained by solving the disciplined convex concave program problem here where the objective is to minimize the sum of maximum between xi and zero, where xy corresponds to the error of the xy sample. That is, a negative sample is correctly classified, and the positive sample is correctly classified. We solve the DCCP problem. Above, you can see the XPy package from Python with the DCCP extension and the mosaic solver. Let us now describe the computational experiments. We consider 13 datasets from the OpenML repository. See details in the paper. We use the following classifier for all datasets an LDAP with N1 and N2 equals to 10. 
we use the MLP, the linear support vector classifier, and the RBF support vector classifier, all from Python scikit-learn, scikit-learn, with the default parameters. Also, we consider the max out network, which have been implemented using TensorFlow add-ons, with then locally affin regions, which is very similar to the LDAP classifier. Here we show the box plot of the F1 score of the outcome of this experiment. Note that from the statistical point of view, all the classifiers are equivalent. But the LDAP classifier yielded largest median F1 score, while the MLP classifier yielded the largest average F1 score. As to the training time, we observe that the linear and the RBF support vector classifiers are the fastest models to train. As to the LDAP, the MLP and the max out classifier, they took similar training time. In particular, the LDAP and the max out are quite competitive. Concluding, in this talk, we have introduced the linear dilation erosion perceptron LDAP classifier for binary classification tasks. We train the LDAP by solving a convex concave procedure and the computational experiments revealed comparable performance with traditional classifiers. In the future, we plan to investigate further in detail the convex concave procedure, for example, explore the duality relationship. We also intend to include the regularization terms in the objective function. And finally, we want to investigate the application of the LDAP for regression tasks. Any question, please contact Marcos Eduardo Valle at this email. And thank you very much for your attention.